Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex the Comic Hoarder. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. I'm really excited to share these books with you. This is a collection that I recently got and I'm pumped to show you. These are EC Golden Age War books. Are you ready? Here we go. Recently, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of live chats, and a lot of my favorite YouTubers in this comic book community are talking a lot about EC books. There's something real and something true about rabbit holes, and the EC rabbit hole is something that I didn't necessarily want to go down, but recently I kind of fell down one. Huge disclaimer before we start this video, I know very little about EC books. Now there's a lot of people in this comic book community who know a lot more than I do, I'm going to shout those people out right now. The first YouTuber that I found that had books in relation to the ones that I'm about to show is Comic Hoarder 410 Matt. He's got a lot of books, he's got a lot of EC videos, and these are videos that I learned a lot about when I knew absolutely nothing about EC as a genre. The next YouTuber who's got a lot of EC knowledge and a lot of EC books in his comic book collection is Captain Strange Life. Huge shout out to Hans, he's been around for a long time. The awesome thing about those EC collection videos is they date back like six to eight years. This guy's been on YouTube for a long time and has been one that I've watched forever. The next group of YouTubers, I'm gonna bundle them all together because we know them as ETA Nick and the dudes. It's ETA Nick, Reaper Tate, Dr. Von Chilla, and Luther Manning. They describe themselves as the Beatles and in my book, there is no bad Beatles, so they're all equally awesome in every way. And I don't know if they intend to, but they inspire at least me to have a more sophisticated taste in my comic books. All right, now on to the Hall EC, otherwise known as Entertaining Comics, was founded in 1944 and actually went defunct in 1956. I was in Chicago at the beginning of last week and was trying to make a deal on a really great first appearance of the Silver Age in DC. And when that one fell through, luckily I was able to find a video game shop that also had comics. The shop surprisingly had about 20 long boxes and there were three other guys digging. I was picking out the standard Jim Lee, Michael Turner covers and minor keys and I knew that if I wanted to find something special I was going to have to act fast because I knew these other guys knew what they were looking for as well. One of the unspoken rules in comic book hunting and comic book digging is you never give up your ground. If there's other people hunting and digging around you, you stay at your box until you find that gem. Well, I broke that rule and I turned to the shop owner and I just went for it. I said, do you have any bigger books or older books? I noticed that the other guys kind of stopped what they were doing and looked up at the shop owner to see what his response would be. And to all of our surprise, he had extra comic books underneath the table where he kept his good stuff. He pulled out a couple things. The first thing he pulled out was all of these binders. And these binders had these plastic sleeves in them, which had a collection of comics. Marvel, it was a full run of one through a hundred and something of a specific Marvel title, which I may be going back for at a future date. But then he also pulled out two grocery bags, and I could immediately tell through the grocery bag that EC branding, and I knew this was a game changer. The first bag had seven two-fisted tail issues, and I want to share those with you right now. The first issue is from October 1951, and this is issue number 23. It's a Harvey Kurtzman cover. The next is a pretty famous cover. This is Two-Fisted Tales number 26 from April 1952. This is also a Harvey Kurtzman cover. And one thing that I always notice, he's, he's got a very distinct style. And as you can see, the way he draws his faces and the eyes, it's kind of his style. And we'll notice some of the other artists that are drawing in this draw a little bit different than he does. But that's very, very famous. And I know Harvey Kurtzman had a lot to do with EC War Books at this time. Next issue is number 28, Two-Fisted Tales. As you can see, there's a little chunk there. This is from August of 1952. Once again, it's a Harvey Kurtzman. And you can see, once again, his stylized drawings. This is Two-Fisted Tales number 30 from December of 1952. This is a Jack Davis cover. And from what I've heard from, I believe, Comic Quarter 410, this is, was voted one of the best wartime covers. This is Two-Fisted Tales 32 from April of 1953, and this is a Wally Wood cover. This is Two-Fisted Tales number 33 from June of 1953, and this is a, another Wally Wood cover. You'll notice the difference between his artwork and Harvey Kurtzman and Jack Davis. 
Two-Fisted Tales ran from issue 18 in November of 1950 to issue 41 in May of 1955. I wrote down a list of all the notable creators that did work on this title as well as Frontline Combat and they are Harvey Kurtzman, Wally Wood, John Severin, Jack Davis, uh, Joe Kubert did work on this, Johnny Craig, Bill Elder, and Gene Colan. These are all names that are really classic and you've heard from other really main titles but they did work on Two-Fisted Tales and Frontline Combat and right now I'm going to show you guys the Frontline Combat run that I got. This is Frontline Combat number one from August of 1951. This is a Harvey Kurtzman cover. You can really tell. And once again, those eyes, the jawline, the way he draws these people. And this is probably one of the more beat up copies. It's still presentable. It's still held together. It still exists. And I'm really happy to have that. Number one, Frontline Combat. This is Frontline Combat number two from October of 1951. It's once again a Harvey Kurtzman. This is Frontline Combat number three from December of 1951. It's another Harvey Kurtzman. And when I look at this artwork, I think of the goon. So whoever did the art on the goon uh, may have got inspiration from Harvey Kurtzman. But if you can think of any other inspirations or things that look like Harvey Kurtzman, put them in the description below because this is very familiar artwork. I just can't put the two things together. This is Frontline Combat number four from January and February of 1952. It's another Harvey Kurtzman. This is Frontline Combat number 5 from March and April of 1952. This is another Harvey Kurtzman cover. One thing that EC did more than any other comic book producer was that they talked more about the horrors of war instead of the superheroes coming in and saving the day. This is Frontline Combat number 6 from May and June of 1952. It's got a really cool date stamp right there. It's a Harvey Kurtzman cover. Two things that this book has also got going for it is it's got a the first letters to the editor uh, included within this title, and it's got a full page with a picture profile of Harvey Kurtzman. This is Frontline Combat number seven from July and August of 1952. Really love this Harvey Kurtzman cover. This is Frontline Combat number eight from September and October of 1952. This is a Harvey Kurtzman depicting these awesome Korean wartime fighter jets. Frontline Combat number 9 from November and December of 1952. This is also a Harvey Kurtzman and this is the last of the Harvey Kurtzman covers on this run and the last time I will say Harvey Kurtzman. This is Frontline Combat number 10 from January and February of 1953. It shows the horrors of war and this cover is by John Severin and Bill Elder. This really is, I mean, all these comics are in pretty decent shape except for that Frontline Combat number one, but this really is, is uh, what Dr. Von Chilla would call a blazer. This is Frontline Combat number 11 from March and April of 1953, and this is a Jack Davis cover. Frontline Combat number 12 from May and June of 1953, another Jack Davis cover. This is issue number 13 from July and August of 1953, and this is a Wallywood cover. This is Frontline Combat issue number 14. It says October. Uh, I think online it says September of 1953, and this is another Wallywood cover. Frontline Combat was a 15 book series. This is Frontline Combat number 15 of January of 1954. This is the last issue in the series, so I was able to get the full run. This is a Wallywood cover. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed looking at these EC Wartime books with me. And I hope I was able to provide a little bit of information that maybe you didn't know about some of these books. Um, these Two-Fisted Tales, these Frontline Combat books are awesome. The artists and contributors, the writers are wonderful on these books. Um, let me know down in the comments below what book was your favorite out of all of these books, as well as let me know um, if there's any EC books that you're wanting to chase. If you could leave a like rating for this, and if you're not already subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscription button and hit that bell to be notified when other videos are coming out. I've got another haul coming up very, very soon. And also check out this haul. I uh, just did a haul with a really great Marvel upgrade. So hopefully you guys are well. Merry Christmas to you guys or whatever else you celebrate. I celebrate the birth of Jesus. 
uh, in this household. That's what we do. And uh, so Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays to you uh, in whatever you celebrate. Have a great one, and I'll talk to you all on the next one. See you. Bye.